So hello, my name is Aralia Ramirez and I'm the coordinator for the Chico State First Year Experience Program. Thank you um, for taking the time to be here uh, to record this interview with us. We're excited to learn um, a little bit about your experience with grassroots petitions. Um, so to get us started, would you please tell us your name, your occupation, and a little bit about your experience with political activism? Sure. Uh, my name is Pam Larry, and uh, I am currently the director of a local nonprofit called the Butte County Local Food Network, where we do just about anything we can to create a strong local food system. Uh, before that, uh, we haven't done any petitions for that. Uh, we're just a whole lot of actions and pro projects and programs. But I got started um, in food advocacy, so I call myself a food justice advocate. And um, I fight for food and food transparency. Um, and the way I got started was in 2011. It's coming just up on a year, uh, 10 years now, 2011 in January. I got inspired to do a ballot initiative in the state of California to label genetically engineered food. Um, I had never done anything political before. I had absolutely no money. I didn't think I had any connections, it turns out I did, but Chico's such an amazing place. Butte County's amazing. Uh, and, um, and uh, but I just got started. And so um, I started, got my car, uh, an old Camry, and I got my car and I started building a grassroots movement in the state of California that eventually led to 90 groups around the state, local groups. And uh, we did a petition drive, uh, that was uh, managed by a uh, professional petition person. Ultimately, we gathered over about a third, we gathered a total of like 971,000 something signatures and about a third of those were, were volunteer grassroots people. And that was my department. So uh, we did that. And then also after that, I consulted and worked with people around the, this state and then other states to do county and state level uh, petition drives. So that's my experience. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that, especially, you know, your experience not having any political experience prior to that, um, that petition. Um, so now that you've shared a little bit about what it was and the background of it, how committed are you to the overall efficacy of this action? Of petition drives? Yes. Uh, to on ballot initiatives. So there are a lot of petitions kind of going on around there, uh, out there, um, petition drives. So I have become a little bit uh, disillusioned with the ballot initiative at the state level, uh, to be honest with you, uh, because uh, basically what I learned through that process is that uh, very the, the ballot initiative process at the state level was begun as kind of a people rising up sort of thing, that if the um, uh, if elected officials at the state level were not passing the laws that we wanted to see done, we could organize ourselves and um, and get a petition on them. Is that once that's there? they can't change it. it. It's more powerful than legislation, okay? But what's happened over time is that it's become like everything else in our society. It's all about money. It's who has the money, how much can you spend on the petitions to make sure that your petition is, is on the ballot. If you have enough money, you know, people work their butts off to get because they pay per signature. So it's anywhere between $1.50, depends on when you start the petition, the closer you get to the election, the expensive it gets. But it's gone from a powerful people thing to a money a monetized thing. I also learned that once you get getting it on the ballot is the easy part, to be honest with you, um, even when it's just like uh, like at a county level that, that I'm still talking about state level here. And I'll talk about county and local really soon. But um, on the state level, uh, they can also the, the people that have the most money can buy the most commercials. And what happens is I've listened since Prop 37 is what it ended up being to label genetically engineered foods in 2012. Um, 
what happens is is that they all st- all the ads they they cut out all the same ads loose jobs hard on you know hard on this hard on that and and it can have nothing absolutely nothing to do with what the ballot initiative is actually about it's just who has the most money to run the most ads that can convince people that being said that's on the state level on the county level and the city level i am incredibly uh, committed to if it's efficacy because you can get a petition online if you're if it's i mean not, i'm sorry not online you can get the petition on the ballot um, if you have a group of committed people that are willing to devote a couple of years to this process, if you go out there and you educate people and you spend time at, you know, events, which is kind of hard now, but if events, letting people know, talking to people, letting the word spread, then you can gather all the petitions by volunteers and then you can get it on the back and you've, you've had enough time. One of the things I say with petitions of, ba- of ballot initiatives is you either have to have a lot of money or you have to have a lot of time because the money part can overcome the time part with lying commercials. <laughs> but the time part allows people, that's what this process is supposed to be about, people connecting with people and voting in that way. So city and county, best way to go about it because again at those levels whatever is decided at the at the box is what stays the city council and the board of supervisors can't overturn that unless it's a part of the provision of the ballot in itself which is why prop prop, uh, 13 i don't know uh, how many people you know of your age would know this i barely remember but prop proposition 13 froze uh, uh, property taxes. And uh, it, it's been really hard for the state of California because property taxes are valued from way, way back, but it can't change because you know it, it, if you've lived there forever, you can't have your property tax change because of the will of the people it supersedes what goes on in Sacramento. So yeah, right. it's an amazing process. It's an original intention. When it's used as it was originally intended, it's an incredibly powerful process. Awesome. Thank thank you so much um, for explaining that and sharing that information. Knowing that, um, you know, propositions alone may, um, in some instances, may not be able to create the change that we hope to see. Are there any other actions that you would suggest um, to include or to um, use that would complement this one and make it more effective? So you mean a dual strategy? Mm-hmm. Um, well, uh, I mean, the two processes that I know of that we have to change policy is either the ballot initiative or convincing the body, uh, the governing body, such as the city council, the board of supervisors, or the state level government of the Senate and the elite. So you have, th- those are our options that I'm aware of to change okay. the law. Um, so if you uh, if you don't get your ballot initiative, you know a lot of times they'll say like at the state level, and probably if this holds true for the the more local levels too, um, you should try first with the reg- regular legislative process, because um, first of all it it is a lot less work, <laughs> it's a lot less expensive, but it also when you go to do the ballot initiative you can say we been trying to get our legislators to enact this law and they're not doing it so this is why we're doing the ballot initiative we did not do that um i was a uh, newbie to the political scene and i was just you know i was really clear that our legislators were not labeling genetically engineered foods not you know allowing for transparency and choice and so i just thought the will of the people i didn't realize that votes could be bought to lies um so but yeah, I mean, those are the two options you have. Um, you know, with legislative processes, there's the best, you know, the best are. Do you want to hear about those or is that for another speaker? <laughs> okay. I, um, I mean, if you want to share briefly a little bit about it, I think that, that'd yeah. be great to share. Just, yes. you know, yeah, just to get your champion, you know, get a group of people that are, you know, that, you know, a bunch of different kinds of people go in as a group 
you know, so you've got a business person, like in my instance, a business person, a farmer, you know, a, a mom who wants good, healthy food or this or that, you know, whatever. And then you go in um, or a professor maybe who knows about pesticides or whatever. And then you go in as a team and you each speak to different parts. You know, you the one person on board and then you lobby the others. And then you just try to get the vote in your favor. That's the legislative process in a nutshell, whether you're talking about the city council or the, the county or the state or the federal government actually. Yeah. Awesome. And I've well, worked all of them. I've spent time, I've spent time in Washington, DC. I've spent time in, you know, in Washington state, Oregon, yes. Colorado, California. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, as we wrap up, um, or is there anything else that you would like to share with us about grassroots petitions and your experience um, with them? Well, one of the things I would like to just touch on, um, I was, I've been talking about uh, uh, ballot initiatives, but there are other kinds of petitions out there. Um, one of the most effective petitions that you can do are those ones on the .gov site, because those it can impact making comments um, and you know signing those petitions online are very, very important. It gives the agencies uh, the information that they want and lets them know how people feel. Um, in my opinion, the care to and the whatever, all those other stupid online ones uh, in general, very ineffective um, and have been told by numerous politicians that they don't, they don't care, they don't look at them, they, you know, because it's not original, it doesn't take any effort, it's just a click and send. So um, that would be, that's kind of it about petitions. Yeah. Yep. That's, I mean, that, those are great tips um, to, uh, for us to know about. So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, and thank you so much for your time. Sure. I know Good. you are a super busy person. I know students are really going to enjoy hearing from you and your experience. So thank you. And hopefully in the future, um, once we are able to, you know, join um, in person for town hall, hopefully you can join us then as well. Can I just say one more thing? Yeah, of course. I just want to say powerful thing that we have as students and as people and as citizens of this country is to act. So uh, on all levels, you know, yes, it's important to get policy changed, but equally important is just to create the world that we want to live in. So um, I invite people to check us out if you care about food issues is to join us at the Butte County Local Food Network. Yeah. Yes, that's awesome. View County Local Food Network or on online. Okay, thanks. Thank you so much, Pam.